I'm telling you, I, I have to say full disclosure that I am so proud, and you should all be proud to have as your coworker, uh, Jolie Brislin. I've known her, yes. I've known her as a young girl. I've watched her grow up into a wonderful woman, a wife, a mother, and a community leader, just like all of you. And I can't wait to see what she and the rest of you, along with me, will do next. So I want to thank all of you and Jonathan Greenblatt the Anti-Defamation League, for your tireless work in finding anti-Semitism, bigotry, and hate in the United States and across the globe. Because for over a century, I don't have to tell you, you've been working to combat injustice and unfair discrimination against our Jewish community and to secure justice and fair treatment for all. Because everyone here in this room knows that never again means never again or anyone. And I am honored to serve as Nevada's newest senator, to hold the distinction of being the third Jewish woman in the United States Senate, and the first former, I'm actually the immediate past president of my synagogue in Henderson, Nevada, the largest synagogue in Nevada. <laughs> I will lose that immediate past president distinction uh, uh, coming up soon uh, this month in June. But uh, for right now, I, I hold those two things. So I always tell people that uh, uh, before coming to Congress, you know, I was a synagogue president. So if you think that wasn't a challenge, if you think the Senate or Congress is going to be challenging, you come visit our world. And uh, there you go. But, but honestly, um, my time as a synagogue president, community leader, and um, now serving as United States Senator, both the biggest blessings of my life, both inform me um, in ways beyond what I ever could have imagined, and both give me the strength to do what I need to do along with all of you. So in our office, we have made the choice to have an open door policy. And that means everyone who wants to talk to us gets a meeting. We listen to the people we meet with. We really hear their stories. We carry these stories with us when we make decisions. And that's what you all need to do today when you go visit your elected officials and their teams. You need to tell them your story. You need to tell them our story. You need to tell them the story of Jewish Americans living in our country today and the challenges that we're facing right here, right now. We just wrapped up Jewish American History Month, and I'm proud to stand here with all of you and celebrate my Jewish American heritage, our Jewish American heritage, and there's no issue, no, no issue that threatens our progress any more than the alarming rise of anti-Semitism right here in this country and around the globe. We've seen the rise of anti-Semitism and political movements across Europe for some time now. And anti-Semitic groups are organizing in Greece, in Hungary, and in France. They've expanded their influence online, and now we're seeing individuals who once hid these dangerous views. They feel emboldened. People believe that these movements only happened. They're only happening in Europe. They're only on the rise in Europe. But just two years ago, neo-Nazis gathered by the hundreds in, Charleston, in Charlottesville and chanted hateful attacks on Jews and immigrants, evoking disturbing imagery from our shared history that is all too familiar and happening all too often. Then, this past October in Pittsburgh, our country, country witnessed the deadliest targeted attack in our Jewish community in modern American history, a cowardly and hateful act of violence that took 11 innocent lives and wounded six others. And in Poway, California, Jewish Americans were violently taken from us while in the act of prayer. Let that sink in, while in the act of prayer we should be very frightened. And what I have to say for those Jews that perished and for everyone who's perished in these hateful attacks, may their memories all be for a blessing. 
You know, just recently in my own state of Nevada, a Jewish medical, middle school student, the daughter of a rabbi, no less, opened her notebook at school to find a swastika and the words, you don't belong here. These aren't just isolated incidents. Right here at home, we've seen anti-Semitism and the acts of hate growing at alarming rate. I know all of you are here for ADL. I don't have to tell you about the report you published in 2018, the third highest year on record for anti-Semitic acts and hate crimes since you started tracking them in the 1970s. And that source of anti-Semitism, it's no longer just extremist groups or groups pushing shadowy conspiracy theories on the internet. In large part, this new source, this new wave of anti-Semitism is coming directly from some in our own political system. This hate is unacceptable. Let me repeat, this hate is unacceptable. And it's something we must call out and confront head on. And we know that hate and anti-Semitism are not bound by political affiliation. We've seen misguided and troubling comments from some who might otherwise, who we might otherwise consider our allies. So we in this room and across this country have a moral obligation to put a stop to this disturbing trend by calling out anyone, even our friends, when they cross the line. And by standing up against bigotry and anti-Semitism wherever and whenever it might rear its ugly head, left, right, or center, because hate is hate. It has no place in our communities, no place in our synagogues, and no place in our government. So I want to be perfectly clear. Questioning the loyalty of American Jews is anti-Semitic. I want to be perfectly clear. Saying there are good people on both sides of neo-Nazi protest is anti-Semitic. And I want to be perfectly clear. Diminishing the horrors of the Holocaust is anti-Semitic. Like you, I am angry. And I'm beyond frustrated by what I have been seeing and what I have been hearing. We all know that this madness must stop and we are sick and tired of being told that our perceptions, our perceptions of anti-Semitism, well, they're just all in our head. They are not in our head. They are real and they are here. But our job now is not to litigate past, trans, uh, past transgressions and tear open old wounds. Our responsibility to our neighbors, to our friends, to our community, and to our children is to work to prevent anti-Semitism before it starts, to educate, to explain, and to empower. That's why last year, as a member of the House of Representatives, I fought to ensure the State Department appointed a special envoy to combat anti-Semitism. I've continued that fight in the Senate, and I am proud to report that a new special envoy was, envoy was sworn in last month. And I will tell you that I have the honor of being the only, the only member of Congress, both House and Senate, to attend Elon Carr's swearing-in ceremony. And I will tell you that I am honored to be working with him now in his mission to combat global anti-Semitism. In my first month in the Senate, I helped reintroduce a bipartisan bill led by Senators Rubio and Gillibrand to upgrade the special envoy, Elon Carr's job, to the rank of ambassador and mandate that this position, which remained vacant for two years, is always filled. I'm proud to be a co-sponsor of the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act, bipartisan legislation to combat anti-Semitism in our schools so we can empower our teachers and our children to recognize and fight back against hate. Applause 
We must continue to tackle anti-Semitism in a nonpartisan way, and we must do the same in combating hate and bigotry in all forms. That's why I'm calling on Congress to pass the Equality Act, legislation I'm proud to co-sponsor that would finally prohibit discrimination against the LGBTQ community in employment, education, housing, credit, jury service, public accommodations, and federal funding. It's why I'm co-sponsoring the Domestic Terrorism Prevention Act to require federal law enforcement to assess domestic terrorism threats and provide training and resources to state, local, and tribal enforcement communities. Thank you. It's why I'm fighting for our Dreamers and TPS recipients, many of whom have fled hate at home and have come here to the United States to seek a better life. It's why I've co-sponsored the Keep Families Together Act, legislation to prevent families from being separated at our southern border, because we must remember that we, too, were once strangers at this border. We, too, once wandered the desert towards freedom. We, too, were once turned away, not just once, turned away many times, when fleeing unspeakable violence and oppression. And we, too, were told that we were not wanted. But we can only tackle this hate if we do so together with a clear purpose. During this time when anti-Semitism and bigotry are on the rise, it is vitally important that we open our eyes to these disturbing new trends and not allow ideological or partisan thinking to blur our perspective on what is right and what is wrong. We make no mistake, these are challenging times. But in great darkness, it is all the more important that we band together as a community, as a country, to hold up our faith and our values as a source of light. You know, there is a special place in my heart for the values of tikkun olam, repairing the world, the idea that it is up to each and every one of us to make and leave the world a better place than how we found it. And so, although it may seem like the world is in disrepair, I have an unwavering, unwavering faith in the capability of Jews and our non-Jewish allies alike to do their part, our part, to help better the world, to care for one another, and to diminish the hate in their hearts and the hearts of others. So as you go forward today to speak with my colleagues, members of Congress, please carry your values and your ideals with you. Carry those stories of your community and our faith and in your meetings, find a way that you can engage in tikkun olam. So my final message to you is this. Keep educating, keep believing, and keep fighting for our shared values by encouraging those around you to repair the world, to combat hate and injustice, and make the world a better place to live each and every day, not just for ourselves, for those who came before us, for our children, and for our future. Thank you.